Welcome back to Fireside Giants and a happy new year to everyone watching today's video. Today's video, Get All Gone, episode two. Today we're covering Lewis Riddick, potential New York Giants general manager. So want to say first and foremost, thank you to everybody who supported us through the year 2021 and stay tuned to 2022 because we have plenty of awesome New York Giants content and information coming your way all year long. But without further ado, let's dive right in to Lewis Riddick. Now, I'm sure all of you know Lewis Riddick. He was one of the most popular candidates, general manager candidates in the 2018 cycle when the Giants went ahead with Dave Gettleman instead. But Lewis Riddick was definitely strongly considered by the New York Giants. He was one of the finalists, one of the final candidates, and he was at a time a fan favorite. You know, a lot of fans really wanted to see Lewis Riddick get the job. Unfortunately, he did not get the job. But once again, his name will be brought up in this year's general manager cycle because the Giants, once again, probably moving on from Dave Gettleman, looking for new general managers. If you missed episode one, that was where the Giants might consider going in-house with Kevin Abrams. Go check that out on the channel if you want to hear the career history, strengths, and weaknesses of Kevin Abrams. It's in episode one, but now in episode two, career history, strengths, and weaknesses of Lewis Riddick. So let's get started in his career history. Now, many of you might not know this, but Originally, Lewis Riddick actually was a player in the NFL before he made his way as an executive. So, as a player, he was a safety from 1991 to 1998, and as an executive, he was a pro scout for the Washington, then a different name, but the football team from 2001 to 2004, and he even earned his way all the way up to director of pro personnel for the Washington football team from 2005 to 2007. From there, he made his way over to another NFC East rival, the Philadelphia Eagles, in 2000. 2008 as a pro scout, made his way up to assistant director of pro personnel for the Eagles in 2009, and then became director of pro personnel for the Eagles from 2010 to 2013. So he has not been in an NFL front office in over seven, eight years now at this point. 2013 was the last time, and then he left to join ESPN, um, and he's been an ESPN analyst ever since. And he's provided a lot of information as an ESPN analyst, and he's very popular as an ESPN analyst because A, he's super super likable and super presentable, and B, he has a lot of great info and history within the NFL as a former player and as a former executive, makes him just about the perfect ESPN analyst to cover the NFL. But now he's considering making his way back into the front offices of the NFL. He's had many interviews for general manager jobs. He's asked every year, are you considering a general manager job? He said, of course, if one is presented to me, I would consider it. And the New York Giants are always going to be considering him because he apparently made a pretty strong impression last time he interviewed with the New York Giants. So let's go over his strengths and weaknesses, and then we'll discuss my personal opinions on Lewis Riddick and whether or not the Giants should strongly consider him for the general manager job. Now, for his strengths, he does have over a decade of NFL front office experience. Now, he hasn't been in the front office in over eight years, but he does have a lot of experience, and that's more than you could say for a lot of other candidates. There are a lot of other candidates that will be thrown out there for the New York Giants with only five years of NFL, you know, executive experience, maybe six years. But Lewis Riddick was an NFL executive from 2001 to 2013, so over a decade worth of work in NFL front offices with two teams as well, both in the NFC East. He has familiarity with the NFC East, and being an executive for 10 years, he's a scout. He was a pro scout, director pro personnel, um, assistant director pro personnel. He knows how to scout, and that's pretty good, right? That's one of the main things that Giants fans want. They want a general manager who could scout and evaluate talent. And for Lewis Riddick, he does have that ability. He was a pro scout in his time as an executive with the Washington football team and with the Philadelphia Eagles. So scouting, check. He does have the scouting ability. Now, here's another thing that I think is a pretty, pretty huge strength for Lewis Riddick is that he is presentable and very good with the media. Now, Think about Dave Gettleman, right? We love to clown that guy. He's really funny because of the way that he speaks, the funny little analogies that he makes, and the dumb things that he says in the media. But that's not necessarily a good thing, right? That <laughs> We're always making fun of Dave Gettleman for the dumb things that he says in the media and how funny he sounds when he speaks. But Lewis Riddick is a phenomenal public speaker. He is a leader, and he is well-presented. Like, when you see Lewis Riddick, you know that you're getting a classy stand-up individual, and that's kind of important for the Giants, a team that hasn't had the best press, hasn't had the best PR in recent years, has gotten a lot of negative attention pushed towards the general manager spot from, first of all, Jerry Reese, 
then Kevin Abrams for a short time, and now Dave Gettleman as well. All of them have been really the butt of jokes and have gotten a lot of bad press and have not been fan favorites. But with Lewis Riddick, he's such a great speaker and he's so presentable and he's so good with the media that he's bound to win over the fans quite quickly. Now, I understand winning over the fans with words is not always the same as winning over the fans with actions. We've seen that with Joe Judge. The fan base loved Joe Judge. He was a great public speaker, really looked like a phenomenal leader so far has not delivered, and now fans hate him. (laughs) Fans don't like Joe Judge anymore, and it's only been two years, even though he is a great public speaker. So that is a strength for Lewis Riddick, but it will only get him so far. It's the scouting experience that is his major strength. Over a decade of front office experience, that is his main strength. And yes, he is very presentable with the media. That is a huge positive, but it isn't a make or break, or it shouldn't be at least. Now, John Marr, considering all of the negative press that the Giants have gotten in recent years, might put a heavier emphasis on that strength than most of you Giants fans listening to this. But I don't know, man. It, it is to be said. Like, there is a really strong presentable point with Lewis Riddick. Like, he does have great media personality. And, of course, he also has many connections, okay? So he's been, he's had a decade in the NFL as an executive. He also played in the NFL for almost a decade. And on top of that, He's been with ESPN for almost a decade, so he does have connections everywhere. That is definitely another strength for Lewis Riddick. Not only that experience bringing him the the, uh, uh, connections, but also the fact that he is so likable. Everybody loves this guy. If you go Lewis Riddick, all of the ESPN guys just freaking love him, and there's plenty of people in the NFL that also love him. If you search Lewis Riddick, Everyone rants and raves about how awesome of a person Lewis Riddick is, and we know that the Giants love awesome people almost more than they love talented people. So that is something to be said for the New York Giants when they are considering Lewis Riddick. He has a lot of connections. He gets along really well with people, and that could be really beneficial with the Giants, you know, as he tries to make connections in a coaching staff potentially, or to bring people into his front office. He has good connections for that, or when it comes to the media, Put the Giants back on track. Get the Giants on the right side of the media. That's important for John Marr especially because Lewis Riddick has the ability now to kind of speak with his friends at ESPN and in the media and present the Giants in a way that is much, much better than they've been presented in the past. And of course, connections also important when you're trying to sign contracts with players. He definitely has connections to many agents in the NFL. And also when you're trying to make trades or negotiate with other teams, Lewis Riddick has good relationships with many people in the NFL across the league. And that's pretty important as well. He does have good connections and that is a huge strength for Lewis Riddick. So keep that in mind. But now we're going to go ahead and move into the weaknesses. Now, I will say this. His public persona, his presentability, all of that is a strength, but it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Because his public persona does make him an easy target. Lewis Riddick has a Twitter account, and that is never a good thing. Because when you have a Twitter account, you put out sports takes, people don't like it, people send you receipts, and they ruin your day. Lewis Riddick blocks people that do that. And so he's kind of, he was a fan favorite at one point, but people started to criticize him, say, thank God this guy wasn't the Giants general manager. He sucks. What does he know? And then he started blocking the people that were saying that. So yes, he does have a great following. There are people that love Lewis Riddick, but now there are also people on Twitter and other social media media platforms that hate him and of course when you're going on television and you're giving out sports takes you're going to be wrong and unfortunately for Lewis Riddick when you are going to be wrong while giving sports takes on television it kind of hurts your chances of becoming a general manager because some of his sports takes have not been so good especially for a, a former director pro personnel and pro scout not the best takes here like wanting to draft Saquon Barkley at number two overall that was an opinion that Lewis Riddick had. He agreed with Dave Gettleman on that. Now most of the Giants fan base agrees that Lewis Riddick and Dave Gettleman were wrong for that. Revamp the offensive line. That was one of his plans that he shared on the Adam Schefter podcast. Yes, of course, that sounds great. But could he deliver? That remains to be seen. Keep Eli Manning in 2018. Now the fan base is kind of split on that. Many fans are like, okay, they made the right decision, gave him one more year. Many others are saying they should have gotten rid of him sooner. That one's really uh, subjective and up for debate. Resign Odell Beckham Jr., I personally wish that they would have kept Odell. Many people think that they made the right decision to trade him. That's something else you can debate. Resign Landon Collins. Now, this one's pretty interesting because most people will probably be quick to say, well, that's a terrible decision. Giants were right to get rid of Landon Collins. But who knows? Maybe Lewis Riddick would have brought in different coaches or moved Lewis Riddick over to linebacker and made him a pretty good player there because now he's playing linebacker for the Washington football team. It looks a lot better. However, that contract that he got was disgusting. I definitely wouldn't have signed him for one. Then he wanted to release Eli Manning at some point and draft Dwayne Haskins at number six overall. And that's where things get pretty gross, right? Lewis Riddick 
wanting to draft Dwayne Haskins. We all saw how that went for the Washington football team. That was a horrible decision that kind of set them back a little bit. And yes, I know they're in a better spot than the Giants are now, of course, because we're the Giants. But Dwayne Haskins would not have been a good selection with the number six overall pick. Daniel Jones was actually a better selection than Louis, uh, Dwayne Haskins was. And so, of course, you go and you look at all of these quotes from Lewis Riddick, and probably the most damning one right now, the worst one from him, are the quotes that he said about Andrew Thomas. Now, he had a lot to say about Andrew Thomas in the offseason. He was on ESPN. They were asking for their takes about the New York Giants, how they've been mismanaged, how they've been bad at drafting. And this is what he said, quote, the offensive line has been mismanaged in epic proportions. They had their pick of every single offensive tackle in the draft last year, and they picked Andrew Thomas, who was by far the worst one, the worst, the worst. So Lewis Riddick, not a fan of Andrew Thomas, but if the Giants were to hire Lewis Riddick as a general manager, he would then have to step in with Andrew Thomas as his franchise left tackle, and now, it's been months since that quote, Andrew Thomas is a pretty damn good left tackle, and he definitely was not the worst of the selections in the first round last year. So Lewis Riddick was wrong about that. Here's another thing that he was wrong about. I'm pulling up more receipts. I hate to do this, but it just goes to be seen that... Yes, he's very presentable, very smart, has a ton of great experience, but this public persona could definitely come back to bite him if you were hired. Here's who I would draft, stash, and pass for the 2018 NFL draft class of quarterbacks. Draft Josh Rosen, stash Sam Darnold, and pass on Josh Allen. So, as we all know, Josh Allen is an MVP candidate last year. He is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Josh Rosen is a backup. Sam Darnold is a struggling fringe starter backup. So not the best take there, Lewis Riddick. And I, I do hate to pull up all of these receipts, but Dwayne Haskins is the best quarterback in the draft, said Lewis Riddick. He is better than Kyler Murray. Also a bizarre take. Kyler Murray, I thought, always looked like the clear-cut number one quarterback in that class. He was phenomenal. Great arm talent, great mobility, great awareness, super smart player. Really not a good uh, take right there. And yeah, man, I mean, he is great with culture. Lewis Riddick is a culture guy. He does know football. He is a scout. He does have a lot of connections and experience, but his draft takes were very public over the past few years, and they were very bad at times. He really has not been so good with his takes in the draft. He struggled to really find good players, and he's not even scouting, right? Like, he's doing this as an analyst trying to find good players for ESPN to talk about, and he's not doing the best job. He's got some pretty bad takes, so that does make fans pretty nervous, right? They all really wanted Lewis Riddick in 2018, but then over the past three years, watching what he said on Twitter, they're like, oh, maybe we dodged a bullet by not getting Lewis Riddick, although I think the biggest bullet dodge could have been not selecting Dave Gettleman. I think Lewis Riddick would have done a better job than him because not that hard to do a better job than Dave Gettleman, right guys? But there you really have it. There's the career history, the strengths and the weaknesses of Lewis Riddick. Me personally, would I be happy with Lewis Riddick as a general manager? Eh, no, but I wouldn't hate it necessarily. I do think that it would be important for the Giants to get a guy who's good with the media, kind of fix that portion of the Giants. Plus, at least he does have some scouting experience. I would like this hiring better than Kevin Abrams. That much I will say because Kevin Abrams is not a scout. He does not know how to scout. He pretty much only knows how to manage money. Now, Lewis Riddick, does he know how to manage money? Probably not. He was just a scout, but you can always get someone to manage the money and you can just be the good scout with great connections as a general manager, draft some good players, make some good trades, that kind of stuff. I think Lewis Riddick might have a pretty good chance of succeeding in. However, his recent draft takes might say otherwise. So Lewis Riddick, a little bit of a struggle there. And then, of course, if, if things ever go south, he can always just leave the Giants and go right back to ESPN. That's something else to keep in mind. A little bit scary there. But you know what? I like Lewis Riddick. I think he's a really smart football mind. I think that he's a great public persona, a great person. So I would not hate this hiring, but I do not think that he is the best candidate. There are better candidates that we're going to get into in the series that I will express more of a fondness towards. I like these candidates more, but Lewis Riddick, kind of one of the ones in the middle. Wouldn't hate it, wouldn't love it, but I would be okay with it. But of course, I want to know what all of you think down in the comment section below. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss a video and get involved in the comment section. Section. Let me hear what you think of Lewis Riddick, what you think of Kevin Abrams, and who you want to see me break down next on the Ghetto Gone series, the general manager X-Files, where we break down every single candidate in the general manager pool for the New York Giants this offseason. So, like I said, go let me know down in the comment section below what you think of Lewis Riddick and some other candidates. And of course, happy, happy new year. Have a great day, and let's go Giants.